Today on the patio, I'm gonna show you how to make something that is absolutely delicious. Check this out. We've got some smoked braised short rib. I'm even gonna take it a step further and show you how to turn it into an appetizer. Let's get into it. What's up, barbecue fans? Welcome back to the patio. My name's Jake, you're watching Rum and Cook. Today on the channel, we're making some delicious beef short ribs, but as you can tell, the cover's on. All the work, for the most part, has already been done. So I've actually, today is Sunday, I started working on this on Friday. So I've done this over three days. If you wanna do it in one day, you can absolutely do that. But I will give you all the steps that I took to get here, and then I'll tell you how to break it down into one day. Super easy, but what we have here, this is what our ribs braised in. So I did put this in the freezer for about 15 minutes before we started, but it's been in the fridge overnight for about 15 hours. So let me just turn this guy on here. And what we've done here is all of our fat solids are sitting on top. So we're gonna try and scoop this out. Ooh. And there we go. Just like that, we've gotten rid of all the fat. Now, if you didn't have time to let this rest overnight, what you could do is you could put this in a grease separator and that's one of those things that's got the spout from the bottom. Grease sits on top and as you pour it into another one, you leave the grease in that container. But the reason why we're leaving this overnight is that allows our flavors just to hang out with each other for a little bit longer and it just intensifies that flavor. What we're doing here is we've got a lot of liquid, a lot of great flavor here. And now what we're gonna do is we're actually going to reduce this by 55 or 50% to 75%, right? You can go super, super thick with this and it's great on top of. Now our beef ribs, they are now sitting on the counter. We wanna get them up the room temperature. Once this is reduced as far as we want, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our ribs in here and bring them back up the temperature. But for now, we wanna get this up to a gentle simmer and then we're gonna uncover it and we're just gonna let it go. Now, this is gonna take an hour to two hours. It's gonna take some time. The one thing you wanna do is you wanna have a nice big pot that it's in. That way you've maximized your surface area and it will reduce a little quicker. Uh, but once this is simmering, we'll take our, our top off, or our lid off here, and then we'll start stirring it every once in a while and just help work out that moisture and reduce it down. So how'd we get here? So we started Friday night. I went to the butcher, I picked up some short ribs and on a short rib, there's usually a fat side. You wanna cut that off. There is a bunch of silver skin underneath of that and it doesn't matter how long you braise these for, it's not gonna break that down. So first thing I did is I took all of my short ribs and I went around, I trimmed off any like large chunks of fat some of that harder fats there and we trimmed off the side. I took off all that silver skin. Take your time and take off all of that. You do not need that fat. There's enough inside of the meat. And because we're braising these, you're gonna break them down into some delicious tender goodness, regardless of that fat. So once I had all that fat off, we put it on a tray to go in the fridge and we seasoned. So for this particular one, we use 50-50 fresh cracked pepper and diamond crystal kosher salt. I went over every side, top, bottom, ends. Make sure you get a nice even coat all across that beef rib. And then I took some onion powder and some garlic powder and we did the exact same thing, getting a nice coating over that entire piece of meat. From that point on, once we had everything seasoned the way we wanted, took that and I put it in the fridge. And what we're doing here is we're dry brining and we're putting some flavor into that beef. If you wanted to condense this into a single day, you could totally skip that step. They're gonna get a lot of flavor from your broth, uh, but you'll notice when I put this all together, I didn't season my broth because I had a whole bunch of seasoning into that beef and I used some low sodium broth when we made this piece of it. On the second day, got up early, we put some Bear Mountain oak pellets in our yoder. Then I grabbed that cooling rack that the beef ribs were sitting on and we put them on the top rack on the yoder, fired up the yoder, and I set it to 160. Now, right now, we're just trying to put in smoke. We're not really trying to cook. Obviously, at 160, they're gonna to start to cook a little bit, 
but the primary motivator here is I want a whole bunch of smoke into it. And the Yoder puts out a ton of smoke at 160. Once the smoke was going, closed her up, and I ran some errands. Around two and a half hours in, I took a look, and they were looking absolutely delicious, so it was time to get on the next steps. I brought out an aluminum container with some carrots, celery, and onions. We're basically making what's called a mirepoix here, and it just it adds some flavor to our broth. The other thing I wanted to do is I wanted to add a little bit more flavor to the onions, so I cut them up, and we put them in the frying pan with some olive oil, and then a good amount of Merlot salt, just to add a little bit more flavor to them. And now what we're doing is we're sauteing them, but a little higher than a saute, not as high as a fry, right? I wanna, be, I wanna render a bunch of water out, soften them up, um, and I wanna get a little bit of flavor, some fun on the bottom of that uh, frying pan while they're cooking away. So while they were reducing and cooking, what we did is we started to prep our carrot celery. Now, clean your carrots and celery, but don't peel your, your carrots or anything like that. Just rough chop them up, throw them in the bottom of your container that you're gonna braise in. I just used an aluminum container here, and then we fill it up with a little bit of low sodium beef broth and a whole bunch of red wine. I'm just using some Costco in the box Cabernet. It's actually, it's pretty good wine. It's kind of my everyday drinker. If I just wanna come home and have a glass of wine, it's always around. So we use that probably about 75% red wine and 25% beef broth. We really want a lot of red wine in there. That's gonna add a lot of flavor. We put our broth on the yoder, and now what our goal is, we wanna get a whole bunch of smoke into that liquid. The reason for that is when you smoke just the beef, when you put them in that braising liquid, the smoke kinda, I don't know, it gets washed off for lack of a better term. It just is not as intense uh, if you just ate that meat right away versus when it's in the broth. So I wanted to get a bunch of smoke in that broth. So we threw that uncovered in there, started to get kissed with smoke, and we continued to render down our onions. Once they got translucent and got a little bit of color on them, had a nice little fawn on the bottom of the pan, I threw in five pieces of garlic. We warmed up that garlic, smelling good. Every little step of the way here, there's a whole bunch of different smells and it's just smelling amazing out here. I got the wine broth behind me, got garlic over here, and we let that go for about two minutes. After that, then we got our, our tomato paste. Now you wanna use a fair amount of tomato paste here, maybe like half of a tin if you buy the small one, I have it in the tube. But the big thing here is you wanna cook it down for a couple minutes just to take that raw flavor off. But that tomato paste is gonna add a depth of flavor into your broth. Then I took a little bit of red wine and we deglazed our pan, just using the Costco cab in a box here. It's kind of my everyday drinker. It's a good everyday wine. If I wanna just come home and have a glass of wine after work, there it is. Um, really tasty in a broth or anything like that, making a, a spaghetti sauce. Um, I use a fair amount of it. But what we did is we deglazed our pan here and then I threw the onions into the broth and just made sure we had a clean pan. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave that broth go uncovered for a good hour. Before we could add our beef to our broth, we had to add one more layer of flavor and we seared all sides. left our short ribs in our broth there, uncovered for a good hour. Getting as much smoke into that broth as I can, and then after that point, I just stirred in that smoke, and then we covered them up, and turned up the yoder to 275, and let that go until they were done. Now, it's gonna take somewhere between three hours and five hours at that stage, because it, the beef has already come up to a temperature. Um, if you were skipping a bunch of steps and, and not doing that and just putting them right in the broth, then you're looking closer to five or six hours, just to give you an idea. The goal there is, is that when they're done, you're gonna use your thermometer and you're gonna be able to feel that tenderness to know. Now, off camera, I tested them. They were at 207. I was like, oh, these are done. They were perfect. Uh, and then I got a shot of me temping them out and it was down already to 199. 
195, but they were actually at 207 when I initially sh shot it. I should just have the camera on. I didn't know they were quite done. In my case, it took three hours and 45 minutes to be finished. And at that point, we took them inside and we started to let things cool down for a little bit. I pulled out our short ribs, I put them on a plate, and then we strained our broth. We don't need those vegetables anymore. We just want the broth, put it in a bowl, and then I put some ice in there to help cool it down a little quicker. And then we put them in the fridge overnight. Overnight, that sauce is all the fats rising to the top and our sauce is just getting that much better. All those flavors are just sitting together, hanging out for 12 to 14 hours and we're back to where we are today. So now I can tell that this is boiling, simmering. So we will give this a little stir. Now you can see we had just a gentle simmer here. Do not rush this process because you will just burn it. And then <laughs> in my case, I would waste almost two days of work. So let this go slowly, let it simmer. Um, it, like I said, it's gonna take an hour to two hours, uh, but we're gonna let this go and I'll bring you back when this is ready. So right around an hour later, our sauce is reduced. Now earlier, I misspoke, I said that you should reduce the sauce by 50 to 75%. I meant at a minimum. Ideally, you're gonna go much further than that. We've reduced it by about 90%. The more that you reduce this, the thicker it's gonna get and the bolder that flavor is gonna get. To get an idea of how far you should reduce it, just take a spoon. It should coat the back of that spoon, right? That tells you how thick it is there. Before this, when you put it in there, it'll just run right off. So we know that we're in pretty good shape here. Let me introduce you to the star of the show. Look at those bad boys. So the great thing about this meal is that you can kind of modify it, right? This was all done yesterday. If you want a nice Sunday dinner, you start about an hour and a half before you're done and away you go. Any leftovers, you can just, I'll just throw them all in a Ziploc bag with the sauce and then I'll just warm it up in a pan and then I can have a great weekday, weekday meal as well. What we're gonna do now is we are going to take our beef. We're gonna put it in our sauce here. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take our sauce here. Give a nice coating on top. And now we don't want this to reduce anymore. So we'll take our lid, we'll put it on tight. And I'm just gonna reduce the temperature one step. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna let the short ribs warm up for 20, 30 minutes. Gives you the perfect amount of time to prep some sides and get ready for dinner. So I know up until now you've been wondering where the heck my rum and coke is. Listen, you can't have rum and coke with something like this. You need some wine, so cheers. This is actually my dinner. Yeah, I mean, look at that. Perfect. Now we're gonna plate this up. Now when it comes to braised ribs, there's a couple things you can do, right? You can serve this as a meal. You can also serve this as an appetizer. I'm gonna show you that I made this last year for New Year's Eve as a little treat and it was a hit. So I'm gonna show you that real quick. But first off, we'll work on our meal. Gotta have some mashed potatoes there. And of course we need a little bit of the sauce that's in here. And you can add your vegetables or whatever. But what I've got here is I also have some little French baguette pieces. And what I did here is I just put some olive oil on them, some Italian seasoning, Tuscan seasoning, uh, and then some Parmesan, lightly toasted them. We'll take one of these guys out. We'll just grab this small one here, my little guy. And obviously this is just gonna break apart super easily. And I just wanna get real small pieces. Make sure you get some of that bark on there. Clearly I'm not a culinary chef. <laughs> A hack at best. But what we can do here now is we can take a, just a little bit of this sauce, just drizzle some of that on top. 
enough to give it flavor, but you don't want too much that it gets messy. And that's that. So these, I know, are delicious. It's been a while since I made them. That, my friends, is a great little appetizer. I mean, looks great, tastes great, and your guests are sure to love it. But of course, we came here for the main event. Let's check this out, let's try it. Can't wait any longer. I mean, you should not need a knife. I'm just holding it in place. Big old piece. Mm. Mm-hmm, exactly what we're going for. This is a delicious sauce on top of your mashed potatoes as well. Mm. Man. Well worth it. I've made these in the day before. Taking the time to dry brine them and stretching out the process a little bit really kicks that flavor up another notch. If you haven't made these before, I highly recommend them. If you have not taken three days to make them, give it a shot. Smoke them. There is not a lot of smoke in here, but there is a nice little smoky background. Exactly what I was going for. I'm gonna go in and tear these up. Thanks as always for watching. I appreciate your support in the channel. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. While you're down there, subscribe. I'll see you soon.